Okay, thanks for waiting, you guys. All right, I will get started. <laughs> so, um, so let's just start. How about with um, well, maybe I can start by asking if uh, wait, who just messaged me in voice? Um, anyway, um, do you guys? No, do you guys all know about what a Turing machine is, and do you know what cyclic tag is? Um, I guess I can just I can just start from the beginning anyway, since uh, since I'm recording this anyway. Okay, so cyclic tag is um, is this system where. Um, it goes through a series of um, it, let's see the system goes through a series of, of rules and um, maybe I can find something here let me see uh, no 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 Um, so it's like um, you start with a, a list of uh, binary numbers, zeros and ones, and um, basically uh, you go through the rules and if there's a one here it adds something to the end, if there's a zero it, it doesn't Let's see. It re sorry, it removes the first thing from the list, and then if there's a one, it adds something to the list. Yeah, and if there's a zero, it just removes the first thing from the list, or it removes the first thing either way. But um, so this one, it starts out with a one, and then it, so it's adding. I guess it's adding this one zero first. Then um, am I am I even looking at this right? Uh, Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Now I'm like confusing myself because I'm like, how did, how is this a cyclic, how is this a cyclic text system working? Um, yeah. Well, okay. This this one makes more sense. I think this is returning every fifth state. Never mind. So it it removes the one and it adds the one zero. Um, then it removes. Okay. What's up? First, first, explain that there's there's like two different strings. There's like a program um, string. Yeah. Right. Which is there's there's like a program and like a data string, which are separate, right? Uh, yeah, that's true. So, okay. um, so start with that. The, sure, sure. So this is the program string, which is just starting with the one, and this is this is a series of the program running, and then these are I mean, sorry, the data string. This is a data string, and this is the program string basically, which has a um, it's saying you're either adding a one one or a one zero, so um, yeah. So this one it's removing a one and it's adding the, the program. It's adding a one one. Then it removes the one and it adds a one zero and it just goes back and forth. Now it's adding one one. Now it's adding one zero. Now it's a zero. So all it does is it just gets rid of the zero, and uh, so it keeps doing that. And it's a very uh, simple but also Turing complete system. And it ends up being. Uh, Easy to implement. A lot of uh, a lot of programs are, are like pro simple programming languages are proved Turing complete by going through cyclic tag. Um, but to actually get from cyclic tag to a Turing machine, like something that you can actually like do real programming in, or even close to real programming in, takes a good number of steps. And um, and there's this paper here that that uh, describes how. Well, let me see. Not. Not this one actually. This one, which shows how to do it, um, and, uh, and and but it, it just kind of describes the steps. It doesn't actually have any code or anything. So I got the code to work. Um, at least it should be working. <laughs> um, so how about we'll start from a cyclic tag system and we'll go backwards um, because basically you it goes like um, it 
goes to like uh, Turing arbitrary Turing machine um, to a Turing machine with um, only two states, um, two tape states, and then that go. Wait, I mean a clockwise. Turing machine, and I'll explain what that is later. And then, sorry about my capitalization, whatever. Okay, arbitrary clockwise Turing machine, clockwise Turing machine with only two states. Then, that the tricky step is that then it goes to a tag system and then cyclic tag. And I'll go backwards and show how you would. <laughs> um, I'll show you how you go from tag to cyclic tag and then this one to this one and so on. So um, tag to cyclic tag is probably actually the most uh, straightforward one. So uh, right, I should probably first explain what a tag system is. Um, so, uh, so a tag system is kind of similar but a little bit more involved. Um, for one thing, it can have um, arbitrary. Well, in this case, um, it, it it can have an arbitrary number of um, of different uh, states for the for the um, tape. Um, I guess you can. What is that image? What are we looking at? Uh, this is the evolution of a tag system. Um, so white is zero, um, black is, no, gray is one, black is two. Um, so you're looking at, um, you're looking at the, um, this is the, um, what's it called? The, um, the data, um, tape and it's, it's being updated each step as you go down here, down here. And, um, so, um, so in this tag rule, basically what happens is that each step, um, you remove exactly two, um, you move, remove exactly two, uh, s um, cells from the front, and then you add a certain number simply based on what, uh, what number, or in this case color, I guess, this, this fr first one is. Um, you can also have more complicated tag systems that depend on more than two or depend on and depend on like what color all the ones are <laughs> but this but but to do to this proof you have to actually use a tag system that only depends on the first color and um uh removes exactly two and 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 depends only on the first color so this one if it's a if it's a two it adds this string to the end and if it's a one if it's a one it adds just zero to the end, and if it's a zero, it adds these two to the end. This is just some arbitrary tag system that happens to do something interesting with somewhat interesting with simple rules. So there's a zero here, so these two get removed and replaced with two one, and then uh, the, so there's a so there's a two here. These two get removed and it's replaced with zero two one two, and then these two are removed and and so on. And it, it I don't know it makes kind of an interesting pattern, which is kind of cool, but whatever. Um, and so um, so here is cyclic tag emulating this tag system, and again this is probably the um, the simplest uh, um, uh, step in the whole thing. So basically. Um, you turn each of these cells into kind of a meta cell, I guess. Um, basically, um, each each of these cells turns into a, a binary cell that has the same number of um, the same length uh, as the number <laughs> of rules. So in the tag rule, so the tag rule has three rules. So each kind of meta cell. I mean, I don't know how much detail you guys want me to go into, but I'll, I'm just going to explain, as, and you guys can tell me. If, but um, but uh, so each meta cell has three cells in it. So it'd be like like this one is uh, kind of like uh, um, so 
so th this one's kind of like one zero zero one zero zero and that that is um, codes for a zero cell and uh, it's not really binary it's actually if this one is if it's zero then this is a one if it's a one um, let me think if it's a one then this is a one if it's a two then this is a one um, and the rest are always zeros so it, there's always only one of these is a one and so what it does is um, hmm. hang on I'm just looking at something here real quick oops Um, sorry, I need to check something really quick. Is this supposed to be... Why is that not working? Shoot. <laughs> um... Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> um, that's, oh, I know what I did wrong. I think. Um, Shoot, sorry guys, I don't know what's going on here. This is supposed to... <laughs> um, is it doing something now? <laughs> okay, I think it's doing something now. Okay, cool, phew. Um, right. So, um... Let's see. So essentially what it's doing is um, it's going through each of these and um, it's kind of, because uh, the cyclic tag system, it cycles through a list of rules. So it's basically cycling through each of these. And um, so it's like, okay, is the, is the first one uh, a one. Uh, yes. Okay. So now I add. Um, now I add uh, this rule. I add. I add two one to the end because it because it's checking this first and then, um, and then for the rest of them it's kind of just ignoring the rules, and then. Um, uh, so so since this is one, it adds it adds this to the end and then and then it just kind of doesn't do anything after that it's just erasing um, and then it has to get rid of this it has to get rid of this one because you're, you're trying to get rid of both of these um, these cells so it goes through a second time and just uh, deletes um, just deletes for these three um, I don't know if that made much sense but um, but you can kind of see it uh, doing doing the same thing up here as down here. Um, this is zero zero, and then it does some stuff, and then you get to uh, here, and this is um, let's see. This should be three, uh, or this one. This one is three two because the third cell is lit up, and then the second cell is lit up, so it's like three two, and then you get to here, and this one should be like. Zero three two three. Um, so anyway, um, at some point again, I want to do like a decompiler, so you can actually watch this running at the same time, and and it'll show that it's outputting this um, and so on, going backwards. But um, but hopefully you guys can just <laughs> believe me that this is a cyclic tag system, and it's doing the same thing as this tag system. Um, and when I get to the end, I can show you um, I can show you all the steps from 
uh, going from one Turing machine to one cyclic tag machine and show you how it blows up. But this one is just showing a few simple examples. Um, all right, this is the this is the trickiest step actually. So <laughs> bear with me. This is, so this is turning a clockwise Turing machine um, that only has um, two. Colors. What is a clockwise Turing machine as opposed to a normal Turing machine? Yeah, I'll explain that in a sec. So, um, but but anyway, it's turning a clockwise Turing machine into a tag system. Now, what is a clockwise Turing machine? Good question. Um, so, um, so a Turing machine, just in case anybody doesn't know or somebody's listening to this later, um, is like um, there's like a list of uh, symbols or numbers. You could have numbers, and um, it goes through and it. Um, there's a head and it goes through and it reads one of these and it compares it with the head state and then based on that it moves left or right and then can I, can I try and to also explain change the state yeah sure go for it so a Turing machine there's a, a tape of cells think basically brainfuck is a classic Turing machine um, although it's yeah so um, you have a tape of cells each cell is a certain state so in brainfuck that would be the state 0 to 255 if you have only one byte um, and you have a head, I mean, like Turing machine head, that moves along tape, just like BrainFuck moves along the cells. Um, in BrainFuck, you write out your program as like, you know, a pro, like a program string. A Turing machine has a, a, a list of states that the head could be in. So in BrainFuck, those correspond to positions in the program. And each state has a table for what it should do if it sees a certain cell, like a certain value on the uh, tape. So every Turing machine has a transition table. Given the state of the head and the state of the cell right beneath it on the tape, it'll decide what the new state on the tape should be. It'll write something new onto the tape. It'll change the state of the head, and it can move left or right. So just like in BrainFuck, you have a thing moving along a tape, changing the value of cells. Similar thing with the Turing machine. It's just a little bit more general. OK, that sounds like a, like a good description. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, OK, so right. So, But a clockwise Turing machine, on the other hand, um, so on a normal Turing machine, you imagine that you have an infinite tape, usually, and that you can move left and right as far as you want on it. Um, a clockwise Turing machine, on the other hand, has a finite tape, um, but the tape can grow in sh well, can grow, um, basically. Um, basically, uh, you can... Oh, well, first of all, the, the Turing machine also only goes in one direction, which is why it's called a clockwise Turing machine. So in, in this case, it, it'll only move to the right. And it, then when it gets to the rightmost, it can... Um, well, yeah, when it gets to the right, it loops back to the to the left one. And so it, it just goes around like this. But also, there's also... A, um, you can choose how many... Um, how many uh, new states to add. So you can either, well, you can either just modify one state, but you can also add an extra state, um, a, an extra symbol to the tape, and expand the tape. Um, and you can do it at any point on the tape. It doesn't have to be at one end or the other or anything. Um, in, in this case, um, we want to have a clockwise Turing machine that can only add one symbol uh, to the tape, which um, which allows you to compile it to the tag system and also ends up being enough to uh, to um, uh, further um, be able to turn a Turing machine into that. Um, yeah, it turns out a clockwise Turing machine is also Turing complete because you can turn a t regular Turing machine into a clockwise Turing machine. Um, yeah, so um, let's see. Did, did that make sense? Um, Anyway, stop me if uh, if if you guys need any, have any questions any any time. Um, so, um, but to further simplify things, um, we want to at one step we actually want to have a clockwise Turing machine that only uses uh, zeros and ones on the tape. The head can actually have an arbitrary number number of symbols, um, uh, but the tape has to have. Um, just zeros and ones for this next step. So um, here is a clockwise Turing machine, um, a simple clockwise Turing machine that I will turn into a tag system. Um, well, I guess that it happens to have the head is only zero or one, but uh, <laughs> but I can show you another one where it, later where it, the, the head has a lot more symbols. Um, so 
the rules basically are, um, let's see, this is the head state, this is the state on the symbol that you're reading, or the, <laughs> the state on the tape that you're reading, and this is the new head uh, symbol state, and this is the new tape state. And, and you can see you can actually have multiple um, states, uh, tape states added. So that's where you're expanding the tape. Um, so here's one where it starts with uh, a one. Uh, this is wait, sorry. This is the tape. So the start tape starts with zero. The head state starts at one. Um, so okay, head is at one. Tape is at first. Tape symbol is at zero. So um, so now the head turns into a zero, and the tape has one one written onto it. Uh, let me think. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Because <laughs> um, one one of the one of these ones is writing over the zero, um, and uh, and then it keeps going. And actually, one one nice way to to um, show this is to have the um, the tape kind of rotate. So the head is always right next to the the, the next um, to actually rotate. So that the head is always right next to the next symbol that that's going to be being read. Which is what's happening in this this uh, this one, anyway. So now we have to turn that into a tag system, which uh, depends only on the first two uh, two states, and um, or only depends on the first uh, symbol and removes only two symbols. Um, and um, and so. Um, now I have to tell you guys that I don't actually 100% understand how this algorithm is exactly working, but it does work. Um, I just kind of went through this paper and uh, and just um, basically tried to implement what they said. Um, so um, this is a concrete view of Rule 110 computation by Matthew Cook. He's the same guy who originally proved Rule 110 to run complete. But he's also actually basically talking about this paper by these other guys, Turlow, Neary, and Damian Woods, whatever, which proved p completeness of Rule 110. Uh, yeah. By the way, this there, there's another uh, uh, proof. The original proof went through a unary step, um, and this is this is what mine is. Mine is using a, a proof that goes doesn't use unary, which is which is kind of cool, I think, but um, but that's what this paper is about, um, and what this one is about also. But this one was a lot easier to follow than this one. Uh, the phrase "concrete view" was is is helpful because it actually shows like what the what the machine is doing. Um, so most of this is talking about some of the other steps that I'm showing you, going to be showing you, have showed you, and or am going to be showing you guys. Um, but this is where it gets to the stuff about uh, tag the tag system. Um, and, uh, and let me just show you guys something else, which is kind of cool, uh, just really quick in the um, abstract. Um, I guess in the abstract. Um, let me see. Uh, well, anyway, apparently this th there was there's this question. Um, I know how to find it. I'll just go like this. Um, why is Control F not working? Oh man. Okay. Um, okay. There we go. Uh, Anyway, it says they solved the geometry problem, which is um, here. The, the modern approach is more complicated, but amazingly solves what I call the geometry problem uh, of cyclic tag tape, tape processors. Um, the geometry problem is that the processing head is unaware as it scans the tape of what the tape symbols are next, what tape symbols are next to what other tape symbols. Um, this effectively because it has a fixed number of bits of memory. Uh, anyway, the point is it's, it's like it's doing something 
pretty non-trivial, I guess. But um, what it's doing is, um, so how, how they show it happening is it, it kind of goes through these, um, um, where do they describe it? Um, They describe it a lot better than I can. Um, okay. So it says in the tag system, we keep all the information in the symbols using a large alphabet uh, since the communication bandwidth of the symbols is very low. For example, every symbol on the tape knows the current state of the Turing machine and um, the current stage of the simulation algorithm. We use six stages and each stage does one pass over the tape. So, so, you, you, so there's like, so you have to go over the same, like this, just to do one step, you have to go over the same um, tape like at least six times and, and actually sometimes it can loop back through the same sta stages um, and uh, each uh, tape symbol actually has a subscript which they don't show here but I can show you in my um, program which keeps track of which, which actually says what state the head is in um, and also a subscript that keeps track of what stage the whole thing is in um, and so um, it just kind of goes through these stages where it follows these rules. So this this is the tape, or this is, let me see, um, uh, whatever. This is this is saying this is an example of the tape, and it's saying okay, if it's an H, and then of course we're ignoring the second symbol because we're only depending on the first symbol. So uh, then we replace we add this to the end. Um, if it's this, then we add this to the end, and, and anyway, and again, all of these have to have stage two, and then you also have to have a rule for each head state, so no matter what the head state is, it has to be able to do these um, these uh, transitions. Uh, and then this is stage three, and this is stage four, and then sometimes it'll cycle back to stage one, because again, there's six stages. Um, Anyway, it cycles through one through four a few times, and then it goes to stage six. Stage six is where it actually does, um, which I can show you guys, um, it does the real, like, um, kind of, it's, that's kind of actually where it moves to the next, um, the next sta uh, state for the, the next step in the, in the, in the tag, in the, in the clockwise Turing machine um, system. Um, so anyway, um, let me just show you guys it running, and uh, so, um, oh shoot, I just remembered, um, I just remembered I have a bunch of, um, okay, bear with me for one second, I need to delete a whole bunch of files here to free up some space, because I'm worried I'm going to run out of um, this will just take a minute though. Okay, delete those files. Okay, just wanted to free up some space on my hard drive for this recording. Um, where's my... Oops. Okay, so, um... Okay, so let's go to let's let me show you that that actually running. Um, so here's a, a simple clockwise Turing machine. Um, actually, did kind of a search to find a nice one. Um, oh yeah, I showed you guys this right. So anyway, um, so this is. Um, I wonder if I should show you guys what the actual rules look like. Well, anyway, it's. Um, so uh, it's starting with the tape just being uh, zero, and the head being at, at stage um, at head being in state one, and the, and the tape is just a uh, zero. So um, so to um, represent a zero, basically A's are zeros and B's 
um, which come up later, are ones, um, because zero is used for another um, another thing in this in this setup, and I'm trying to make it look like in the paper. Um, and so um, so this AA represents it being in um, in uh, having a tape with just with zero, and then these are um, these are just some like blank symbols that um, uh, the tape has to be a has to be a multiple of. Uh, trying to remember exactly why why it does that. Shoot, I, but anyway, these these don't really mean anything. They're just kind of like filler symbols, and then. Um, uh, and so um, all of the um, so the subscript of one. Let me think. Make sure I'm thinking about this right. Um, yeah. So in the subscript, the um, the one is the state of the head. So they all know that the head is in state one. And the two is saying what stage um, we're starting at, and we're starting at stage two because that just works out better. Um, so it starts eating these symbols and it's and replacing with stage three. Um, so now we're in stage three, and um, I don't know. I wish I could explain exactly what's going on here, but I mean, you might just want to look at the paper. Uh, so it goes to stage three and then four. Anyway, the, the, the transition, though, to the next state actually happens b between stages six and, uh, and three. And again, sometimes it goes from three back to one again. All right, but so here we are at stage three and, um, no, stage, sorry, stage six and, uh, um, let's see, we start stage six like this, um, <laughs> whatever, and by here, by st by the time we get to stage three again, we have um, maybe I should open two copies of this actually, so you can better see. Um, uh, just a sec. with uh, 12.3.1. Okay. Sorry, just one minute. I'm opening it, another copy of, of it so I can show you side by side. Um, yeah, okay. So um, so here we are at um, just zero, and then so next it should be one one again. B is one, so we get down to stage three, and now we have um, right and sorry, two uh, letters correspond to one <laughs> uh, one symbol. So A A actually just means zero. Then we get down to here, and we have um, we have uh, let's see, we have B B B B. So that's one one. <laughs> um, then uh, hmm, I guess I didn't run this for very many steps. <sighs> but um, I'll run it. I'll run it for some more steps. Let me do this one actually. Okay. Um, cross my fingers that this works. <laughs> yes, good, that worked. Okay, uh, let's go for, I don't know, 100 steps. Um, 
whatever. Let's do just do a ton of steps. We'll decide later how, if, if that's too many. <laughs> really? Oh, it's, it's, okay. Um, wait, I know what to do. Let's just do show all. That should do it. There we go. Phew. All right. So, um, okay, so we're at zero. Now we get to stage six. Okay. Uh, one, one. Now we go through some stages. We're back at six. We get to three. Um, now we are at, um, should be one zero <laughs> if all is working right. Um, yeah, we have one zero. And then these, again, these are just kind of blank, like filler symbols that have to do with, um, I think it, 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 uh, tries to keep a power of two symbols or something anyway. Uh, I don't know. Don't worry about that. But anyway, so we're at one zero and then, um, we get down to, I should, I should really make it something that lets you skip these more easily. Um, but we get down to here and we're at zero, zero. And maybe we should make sure that, oh, and the, and the head state is at, um, zero. That's the head state, this one. Um, maybe we should make sure that it's actually growing the tape, <laughs> but, um, uh, let's see. Yeah. Zero, zero again. Right. Okay. Let's just make sure it's growing the tape when we get to the next one. And here we have, um, zero, one, one, wait, no, stage three. Yeah. Zero, one, one. Yay. Okay. So that's, uh, <laughs> that step. <laughs> Um, and then, um, let's see, from there it gets a little bit, um, a little bit less exciting, uh, because the next steps are a little bit simpler, actually. Um, so now we want to go from a, um, I'll call it a colored, um, clockwise Turing machine to a binary clockwise Turing machine. Uh, colored meaning it has an arbitrary number of symbols, which could be represented by colors. I don't know, whatever. So arbitrary number of symbols. Uh, <laughs> so um, here's uh, um, oops, wait, that's the clock. Okay, here, so here's a, a clockwise Turing machine that um, uh, it's very similar to the other one, except as you can see now it has a two. <laughs> um, so, uh, this one, um, you know, works the same as the other clockwise Turing machine. It's reading these symbols, re writing them, occasionally adding, um, this is the, the rule. And then, um, uh, let's see. And so how this one works, it's still a bit tricky. Um, so basically, uh, these are just converted into binary. Uh, again, I can still have as many head states as I want, which is nice, but, um, but, uh, um, the, uh, um, yeah, but th these are converted into binary and, and they have to all be the same number of symbols long. So this becomes zero, zero, and this is zero, one, and this is, uh, one, zero. Um, and then they're all just kind of concatenated together. Um, and, uh, basically, uh, so it, it, the Turing machine goes through and, um, and, uh, it, um, reads, basically it, it'll go through and it'll read these and, and while it's, It'll, whatever it'll read these and then it'll write here write write these ones but actually it'll be reading while it's writing and um, so when it reads the symbols it stores them in the state of the head um, and then it kind of spits them back out as it's as it's writing the states um, 
So th this is actually the head, which is kind of a complicated thing because it's uh, a kind of complicated head. But it's nice mathematical. Let's use arbitrary symbols for this. So so this is like um, uh, this number is like the state of the um, of the uh, the head in the original clockwise Turing machine, but then it's got this extra information in the head that's keeping track of basically um, what symbols did I read when I went through the last symbol and what symbols do I have, um, or no, what symbols, yeah, basically what symbols do I have, to, did I read in the last symbol that I have to write back down and what symbols am I picking up while I'm reading <laughs> while I'm reading this new symbol and those are stored in a separate list and uh, it's basically kind of hand wavy how that works <laughs> um, uh, and this was also kind of kind of described in in this paper um, oh I, I should add something else real quick which is um, the um, tag to cyclic tags thing uh, uh, converter um, I didn't really come up with that at all. That that I just basically took straight out of um, Stephen Wolfram's book, A New Kind of Science. He had he had an algorithm to do that, and so I just copied it and made a few little modifications um, for this and that. But um, uh, th but then this one, th yeah, all this stuff again. I got include. You saw that I got this from that paper, but the rest of the stuff I also basically got from the paper. Um, so, uh, like, let's see, um, I transform that into a tag system, um, Just trying to remember where they <laughs> um, where they described it. Um, well, anyway, somewhere in here they basically described in words um, how to do. Just, just they're like, oh, this is an easy thing to do. Uh, you just, you just. Um, store the store the symbols or whatever the transform the two symbols into multiple symbols and they basically just kind of were hand wavy about that um, so I had to kind of figure out figure that out um, how to turn that into code their their like description but anyway whatever um, so then right so then the next step is just to turn um, an arbitrary Turing machine into a, a clockwise Turing machine. Um, actually, I should say it's not quite an arbitrary Turing machine. There's one restriction, which is that the Turing machine can only move one step to the left or the right on each step. But that's not a huge uh, that's not a huge um, constraint uh, because there's a lot of stuff you can do with the Turing machine that only moves one step left or right. Um, for instance, I think someone's turned brain, brain fog into a Turing machine that only moves one step left or right, and somebody else has turned combinators, which uh, is like kind of a basis for functional programming, into one that only goes left to right. Or you could write a Turing machine that moves arbitrary steps to the left to right into one that moves one step left to the right. But that's left as an exercise to the reader, which is fun because they left all of this stuff as an exercise to me when I actually did it. <laughs> but okay. Uh, but anyway, so uh, that was rambly. But um, but uh, how do you turn a, uh, one of these Turing machines that has an arbitrary number of uh, it does have an arbitrary number of uh, st head states and an arbitrary number of tape states into a clockwise Turing machine. Let me explain what this is real quick, by the way. So this is one way to show uh, a Turing machine. Um, basically, the, the tape, these are the symbols, which could be numbers, but in this case, they're just colors. And then this is the head, and the state is represented as like basically a zero or a one based on whether it's pointing up or down. And it's fun because you can all, in this system, you can also have these kind of rotated at different angles to show different states. Uh, I guess Stephen Wolfram came up with that. Uh, whatever, but um, for this program, but um, uh, 
So this is showing, this is one way of showing the rules for the Turing machine. Um, so if the head state is like this and the tape is like this, then it moves like this and turns into this state and turns the tape symbol into this. Um, so this is, this Turing machine is apparently um, uh, Turing complete. It's, uh, it's apparently the, um, basically the simplest Turing complete Turing machine. I think there's a f actually technically there's some other ones that are equivalent to this, but it's the one that has the least number of colors and they, they all are pretty similar and, and have the same number of colors and, and states. And um, with less states or colors, you can't have a universal Turing machine. Um, just some background on this one. But also, also there's an interesting point, which is that the proof that this is Turing complete um, and can emulate any Turing Turing uh, machine and not just this one itself happened to go through cyclic tag. So maybe sometime I could actually uh, show that this one is Turing complete by by compiling cyclic uh, or any other Turing machine into this and then this into cyclic tag. Anyway, but regardless, um, we're turning this into a, a clockwise Turing machine is what we're doing right now. So. Um, so, uh, basically, for this one, um, so it has to always go to the right, um, always go, and uh, the tape starts out finite, uh, with a finite size, um, but uh, basically, there's extra tape symbols on the left and right that let you know that you're at the edge of the tape, and you can kind of imagine how it would work if, it, basically, if it gets to the edge, it Besides adding a symbol, it also adds a new tape uh, tape symbol, blank tape symbol to the right um, to grow the tape. And if you're going left, um, that's a little tricky, but it's not the end of the world. Basically, you leave uh, a marker saying, um, saying, okay, we're going to move, we need to put something to the left of this, and then you go around the tape and come back and hit the marker. And... Uh, um, I think you you mark you basically you would mark the the one that is to the left of it. Am I thinking about this right? Um, you, you go around and um, yeah yeah right. So you're like okay, I need to move left when I hit this one. So I, what I do is I write a marker and then I write this one, <laughs> and so the marker is to the left of this, and then I go around. And uh, and I turn turn the marker into what the new tape symbol should be, um, because also I have to store I have to read this tape symbol and then compare it with that and it's a little tricky but um, but uh, I mean this is this is it in action um, maybe I can show them together again um, so. Uh, so again, the oops, the head tends to hold a little bit of extra information. Um, so it starts out, um, the head is at state 1, the tape is at state 0. R just means this is the rightmost, blank, rightmost it just means, you, okay, this is, this is the right side of the tape, this is the left side of the tape. And again, it's cycling, so, um, so it's keeping track of right and left. Um, so it's like, okay... It's uh, we hit the right symbol, um, which is assumed to be blank. Um, so, um, so if you have a two and a blank symbol, then you write. Um, oh, but also we're moving left. Uh, <laughs> wait, let me think. How does this work? Oh, whatever. Yeah, it, it writes this one and it turns into state 2, and now it's got to move left, so it, it this is the left marker, and so it's kind of rotating through, but let me just show you that it's working. Um, so uh, here we have 0, here we have 1, <laughs> here we have, um, let's see, uh, here we have 1, let me think, why are there two twos. Oh, sh 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 let me think about this real quick. Is this the right? 
one. Um, uh, well, let me just let me just think about this. Zero two. Um, was I doing like a different? Was I doing like a different system here? Um, Okay, I might have to show this to you guys later. It definitely was working. I'm just, uh, I think maybe I, I set up the wrong rule here. Shoot, this is a bad demonstration. <laughs> but, um, I guess you guys will just have to trust me that I had this working earlier. Um, <laughs> I wonder if I can figure out what I, what I did wrong. Turing machine. That should be the Turing machine. That's in state one, right? Um, oh wait, I think I think I know what's going on. Um, I think I know what's going on. Right, 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 right. I just got confused because, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I just got confused. It's, wor it's working right. It's working right. This is, okay, so this is zero. This is one. Then this is, this is it moving left, so it gets a little bit hard to read it. So let's just skip to the part where it's not moving left anymore. So when it's not moving left anymore, it goes one, two, two, which is correct. Good. Phew. And then the next step where it's moving right again is one zero two. Start with this left one zero two. Okay, now it's moving left again. Now it's moving right. So it's um, one one one. Uh, let me see. Mm, yeah, I guess one one one, and then one one two. Um, so it 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 yeah it it works. <laughs> um, two two one two. I know no one two two one two. One, two, two, one, two, where it's moving right again. Yeah, there we go. So that's um, that's pretty much it. Um, I could show you guys real quick um, doing the whole compilation at, uh, at once. Uh, so um, let's see. Whoops, wait. Just a sec. So, in this one, I take that same Turing machine, but, uh, and I actually um, turn the whole, like, go through all the steps just to turn this into a cyclic tag machine. And uh, to the tag system, and I don't know the point. The main point is that at the end you get to this um, this cyclic tag rule, which has like uh, 557 million, uh, <laughs> like the 557 million uh, basically symbols in the rule, <laughs> and then initial condition ends up being like 500,000. So. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much uh, pretty much that. Um, let me see. Um, so I was also thinking about um, talking about uh, how uh, maybe talking about how you get from combinators to uh, to a Turing machine, but I don't know if you guys are interested in in that. Um, maybe I'll do that another time. So yeah, that's um, turning a Turing machine into 
a clockwise Turing machine. I see fire cubes is here now. <laughs> I hope you didn't miss too much. Um, and I hope that made at least a little bit of sense. Uh, does anybody have questions? Questions about that? Um, otherwise, thanks for attending my TED talk. <laughs> and uh, I will, I guess I will stop the recording now.